second today. So um, we'll open the meeting. We have a, apologies, a, a little bit of a long list. So um, happy to move, Mr. Chair. Thank you. They are up there. I think everyone's up there. Yes. Um, Needless to say, before I move it, with, with the um, quorum being tight, we appreciate if people could stay to ensure it happens. So anyway. Just through you, Mr Chair, it would be highly desirable to have a break at I know the feeling, Mr Chair. Given time. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> so seconded by Councillor Lee. <laughs> Are the apologies. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, any declarations of interest? There are none. No petitions. No public input. No yes. local. Oh, sorry. We do have. Oh, Julian's here. Yes. Right. We have public input. We have Julian Barton. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Councillors for the opportunity to talk today. Uh, I, uh, today I'm just wanting to talk in regards to Project 17 and um, weed management and um, and in regards to the, the, the weed management specifically being, being that this is to do with parks. And um, our main concern um, really in regards, so Julian, uh, you now moved into the OWL. Could you just yeah. confirm who you're representing then? Sure. Um, so um, initially to introduce myself, my name is Julian Bartram and I was um, initially affected by chemicals as a child. Um, so from from the age, I, before I can remember, um, I've been involved with this in um, many, many different ways. My, my mother was instrumental in bringing about weed management um, that was chemical free back in the 90s and so since um, since then I've been involved in it and more recently in, in recent months um, I've been involved with um, a, a number of different organizations uh, collective spray free streets um, and the community of Michael Park School and many other organizations have popped up so okay, thank you so many others and um, the so Project 17, on the, fa on the face of it, does look like it's a really good step forward. And so I'd like to say thank you very much um, to all the people who have put that forward. Um, from, from what we can see, it just looks positive, and so thank you. Our, um, where, where I'm coming from is mainly a concern of the lack of, of communications, and, um, and this is not just me, but we feel that way. Um, we haven't really been kept in the loop as to what's been going on. So th there's a lot, um, th th it, it, from, what, from what we can see, it looks as though um, we're, we're able to, ma <coughs> to maintain the parks now without any extra costs, hu any extra huge costs, um, chemical free. And it's a, it's a good sign that perhaps going forward into the future, uh, we'd be able to do the same thing with the streets, um, chemical free for no extra costs. The... Um, this has all been put together um, without, without our communication and with many um, blatant misinformations being passed around um, through memos written by Barry Potter, Rod Sheraton and Mike Tucker. So th these are all memos that have been responded to, that we have responded to um, and they, they're memos that they're responses that people here should have read. Um, many of them go to the extent of claiming that Auckland Transport is using, is living to the legacy policies, which is fundamentally all that we're fighting against because they're not living to the policies. So there are two main questions which, which if, if unanswered, we can't really move forward. One of them is in July last year, Hannah, Blackmore produced the costings. Julian, can I just say that you asked to uh, present at the committee about value for money? This is what I'm talking about here. Okay, right, just so keep it tight. The, the value um, that the, it, we could actually be doing this, according to Auckland Council's own costings, we could be doing this for one third the price if we were to move away from Auckland Transport. This is specifically in 
in regards to the streets. But there's another concern that we have, another question which we, ha so at, at, that, at that July meeting, it was asked um, by the chair at the time um, for this to be looked into by Dean Kempton, and since then we still haven't had any response as to why um, the costs became so much, why the costs became so high as soon as Auckland Transport took over the contracts. And if we were to go away from Auckland Transport, why couldn't we save that money? The other question is whether anybody has looked into using a company who is currently holding contracts in the North Shore and using not using chemicals. There's a company called Biothermal. Um, they have that they are maintaining their contracts to the standard for no extra costs and and so when we ask if you could look into that as an option and we hear nothing in response um, for for the whole year we start to become um, you know wary and so these are these are questions which we have asked from Penny Hulse in writing and in person and from the mayor and the responses we get from Penny Hulse are as though she actually never read the questions so these are of grave concern. So at the last meeting where this was properly discussed, it was decided that this would go out for consultation in the long-term plan because people felt, you all felt that we weren't prepared enough to be able to make the decisions in this, in, in this annual plan. So you're calling for more information, more memos, but as long as you continue asking for that information, for information that's provided to you by the officers, you'll never, you'll never, we, as, we, as we can see, they're not true, they're not answering the questions. So you need to start listening um, to the community and you need to start giving us the opportunity to speak. I've been declined uh, from speaking and many others have been declined from speaking to the Environment Community Committee and this item needs to be put up on the agenda for discussion, for open discussion, so that so that we can all, so, so there are experts in the community, um, d d uh, doctors who specialize in Julian, risk management for chemicals. Is, Julian, time is actually up, but I'll give you sure. another minute. Thank you. Um, I'm actually near the end of my, my speech, so there, this, is, this is what I'm asking for, essentially is that communication is, is, um, is made possible where the community um, can, be, can be spoken with and what I'd like um, really be, because what's coming up is that we're going to be disputing we're going to be talking about this in the long term plan so it's really important that we are involved in what goes out for consultation in the long term plan and, and we want to be involved in that before it's too late once it goes out for consultation it seems like a lot of the major decision making has already been done so we want to be involved in that now so what I'm asking from the council is, is if you want to continue asking for more information from the officers, you'll probably continue waiting forever. And in effect, you will continue poisoning us forever. But if you'd like to, to, to make a stand f for some of the views and some of the concerns that we have, then you've got to start asking for more information from us, from us now. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Um, Councillor, uh, it was great that Julian complimented us on the step forwards we're making on this um, Project 17 contracts because that's what he came to talk about was the Project 17 contracts and our mm -hmm. improvement on spraying in parks around the hard edges, et cetera, et cetera, and playgrounds. So this is not a um, discussion about the LTP or anything, so i just remind you, Councillor Watson. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, and it follows on from what uh, Councillor Clough was saying. Julian, you, 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 you commented on, and in a complimentary way, the, the manner in which the restructuring of uh, the contracts in parks has, has met, uh, to su some extent anyway, your groups or associations' needs in terms of reducing <coughs> chemicals at no extra cost. A am I right to, to assume that you believe that from the, the various forms of expertise you, you have um, available to you that the same sort of scenario or savings to council could, could emerge from different contractual arrangements 
uh, elsewhere in the council group, and particularly uh, in terms of the substantial cost with Auckland Transport? Well, absolutely, that's right. That's not that's that looks like it's the case, not from our assumption, but from what we what the information that we're getting from council, um, and it actually confirms our own assumptions, which are similar. Yes, and um, we we actually think there's a high chance that it could cost less to go non-chemical. So it really seems like it's just, it's so, it's so possible and it's so, such an easy thing when you see that companies are already up and running doing it for no extra cost. So there really shouldn't be um, any concern. And if there, if there was any concern, it would only be to people who might be out of, miss, out of pocket for not selling glyphosate. You know, there's really no other sort of, there's no other conclusion besides bribery and corruption of why this whole thing could be so difficult. A little bit um, careful there with yeah. where you're going on that, but anyway. Well, Mr Chair, not, yeah. not a question to Julian, but a, a question to the officers. Uh, in the same way as we've had this review of the contracts in the park space, can, can anyone say whether there's any such similar review taking place with re respect of Auckland Transport and its contracting arrangements? Can we um, wait to do we the item, John? Uh, okay. Uh, for that question, we've got two really questions of Julian. Is there any other? Wayne, yep. Sure. Um, one of the issues that you raised, um, Julian, was around um, communication and, and I guess uh, transparency. In, and I'll, I'll be very brief, Mr Chair. In the past, under the legacy councils, for example, um, Auckland City, there was an opportunity for the community to um, participate in particular um, groups that were set up so that the community had involvement and, and, and it had um, oversight, and this occurred for many years. Uh, I think um, similar situation with some other um, councils, but certainly Auckland City. Uh, on the part of the groups that um, you're involved with, is there a willingness to participate in, in that kind of engagement? Absolutely, yeah. There's, um, we... We're very, very interested to, um, to hear what's going on. It seems we, we would very much like to be able to work in conjunction with the council, and it seems as though it's more of a battle against the council in many regards. We, um, if we want information, we have to do, um, you know, we ha we have to look in look into it through through what the law has to offer us, and and um, it's not granted to us and in an open way. So we would like to be involved in it, and we would like. Or, um, you know, or for these discussions to be laid out with us so that we can agree with them before they're put in concrete and, um, and signed off. And just a related question that goes to that, and would it be fair to say, given that the Council is, has a, an increasing expectation on the part of the community across the park space, but also across the Auckland transport space around management of berms, which is largely given over to people, that it, it makes sense to have more involvement from the community in order to take advantage of that resource. Absolutely. And from what we can see so far, it appears to us as though um, council is offering themselves as a plug into which we pour our concerns and they're flushed. And, and, and we, we don't want our concerns simply to be flushed. Uh, we, you know, we... Th these are true concerns that many people across the whole of Auckland are very, very concerned about, not just for, for, for silly reasons, but s purely for the fact that they actually want to live a, a healthy life and, and they must be taken um, seriously and, and communications <coughs> must be done um, amicably. And my last question is very quick. Whoa, um, whoa. Yep. I'll be very quick. Um, obviously, we've got a situation now where the contractual situation is being progressively aggregated across the region. And in respect of the area that you're concerned about, which is the use of, um, of chemicals, in many respects, there's less visibility at a contractual level, say, compared to the situation with the legacy councils where there were particular contracts that were visible across um, spraying and, and the like. Looking would you like to mark, see, my question, Walker, is, my question mark. is, my question is, my question is, would you like to see more visibility, more transparency across that? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. It's, it's paramount. Cashmore. Yeah. Very quick, Mr Chairman. Julian, thank you for coming in and expressing your concerns. Very simple question. With these five clusters and the flexibility that it's inherently in, in those involved with local board input, um, do you see this as a methodology of potentially 
proving your points one way or the other on the ground at the time the contracts are let. I, I don't actually understand the question, sorry. Can you just... Flexibility yeah. that are involved in these five clusters that are, the local boards can have input into the level of quality or the methodology. Right. You see it as a, a way of approving the actual theories that you're putting forward about biocontrol. Well, if the local boards have input, then that's, that can't fail to be a good thing, so sure, yes. Thank you, um, Julian, and um, we've got a resolution there. I've got a Happy mover. to move. Councillor Walker. With thanks. Seconded by Councillor Watson. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you, Julian. Thank you.